Hi, I'm Richard Sever from Cold Spring Harbor Lab and BioArchive. With me I have uh, Eli Tanaka from the Research Institute of Molecular Pathology in Vienna. Eli, welcome to Cold Spring Harbor. Oh, thank you. It's very nice to be here. <laughs> and you were, you were just saying you just arrived, so um, thank you very much for talking with me when you've only just arrived and it's been a, what, is it a six hour time difference for you or something yes, like yes. that? Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, well, well, I'm immensely grateful. Um, and as, as we were just saying, you're going to be talking about um, sonic hedgehog organizers uh, at some point during later in, in the meeting. Now, for those of us who associate that with more of a computer game than developmental <laughs> biology, um, can you explain what you mean by an organizer in the, concept, in the, in the context of developmental biology? Sure, an organizer is, is a piece of tissue that when transplanted into a new place can um, cause surrounding cells to produce uh, uh, part of the body. Uh, so it basically causes surrounding cells to contribute to making a new part of the body. Oh, okay. So it's, you know, it, it is able to direct the assembly of, of cells and tissues around itself. Yes. Right. right. Okay. Right. And, and, and you, you you're, you're, the bulk of your research is on axolotl organizers, is that correct? Right. So we work on um, regeneration of the limb and tail in axolotl. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's obviously quite a complex structure that has to be regenerated. Um, with a lot of pattern, and um, uh, in order to do that, uh, the axolotl generates um, from the mature tissue uh, progenitor cell zones that then um, start expressing uh, mo uh, organizer molecules in, in certain locations that then organize the tissue so that it regenerates with the right pattern. Right, and, that, and, and the, the patterning is obviously perfectly or almost perfectly recapitulating what's happened during the original development of that um, of that animal mm -hmm. um, so how, how does it how does it work in terms of you know you cut you cut off a limb I mean if you cut off a human limb it doesn't happen but if you cut off an axolotl limb mm -hmm. it starts again what's the process by yes. which that happens is I mean is the organizer pre-existing is it activated how does how does that work right so that's uh, what I'll talk about um, so um, there's a very famous uh, organizer um, during limb development called the zone of polarizing activity. And in modern terms, this uh, zone of cells in the posterior uh, part of the developing limb expresses a secreted protein called sonic hedgehog. And um, this sonic hedgehog signals to neighboring cells and, and controls growth and patterning. And um, so in um, axolotl limb regeneration, our lab showed that the fibroblasts that would normally form scar tissue in a human limb uh, undergo a dedifferentiation process and lose their mature features and become like a developing limb bud cell again. Uh -huh. And um, s these fibroblasts that are in the limb, they're not all the same. So the ones that are towards the thumb and the ones that are towards the pinky have a different memory so that the ones um, coming on the pinky side uh, into the injury zone and de-differentiating, those cells are able to turn on sonic hedgehog again and reproduce this zone of polarizing activity in the regenerating structure. Right, right. So, so, um, so sonic hedgehog is a diffusible signaling molecule. And, and what, yes. what cells is it? Is its target cell? Yeah, the, the target cells are the cell the, are the dedifferentiated fibroblasts that are coming from the from the thumb side of the right, right, of the right, structure. right. So, but they're just they're just like regular fibroblasts. Basically, yeah, they're fibroblasts, they but they, you, they yeah yeah they're regular fibroblasts when they start, but then um, when you amputate the limb, there's an epithelium that grows over, and then these fibroblasts uh, migrate to the very tip of the uh -huh. amputation site. They undergo this dedifferentiation, and then you start to get sonic hedgehog expression in these dedifferentiated stem cells on, on, on the posterior side, and they're signaling to the dedifferentiated cells that came from the thumb side. Right. Okay. And that and that and then the program just goes. And does the program essentially? I mean, I said recapitulate it. Is it exactly the same as in the original differentiation of that limb? Yes, it seems to be. So. Um, We've uh, performed single cell sequencing um, mm -hmm. of all different stages of regeneration as well as development. 
and uh, and at the height of regeneration when you have a lot of stem cells there, um, those stem cells are very, very similar um, to the developing limb cells. So the process of limb regeneration at some point becomes almost identical to that in development. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and the other thing you're going to be talking about is, uh, is mammals. Now, mammals do not, as I'm aware, regenerate limbs when you cut them off. I mean, I guess the, the question, the first question is, is why don't they? Um, and, th and then, you know, what, is, is one a model for the other if they don't? So what, what, what's the reason that, that you know, if, if you were to cut off my arm, that I wouldn't grow a new arm? Um, yeah, we do think that one major reason why the mammals don't regenerate a limb is that these fibroblasts don't undergo this dedifferentiation. Uh -huh. So both the epithelial cells and the fibroblasts don't undergo enough of a dedifferentiation to be able to start this um, developmental program Person. again. Right. Oh, I see. I see. But so, what, but but you but you nevertheless see sonic hedgehog in mammalian systems. Uh, after injury, I think it's not clear. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So what is so what is the work that you're, you've been doing in, in mammals then? Okay, so in, uh, actually the mammalian work I'll talk about is not about the limb, but about the spinal cord. Uh -huh. And uh, it, so um, sonic hedgehog is also extremely important in, in patterning the developing spinal cord. Uh -huh. And uh, um, when we studied spinal cord regeneration, yeah, again, we showed that spinal cord regeneration involves um, a tube of stem cells growing out and the most ventral stem cells expressing sonic hedgehog and then basically um, promoting growth and patterning of the surrounding cells. Right. Again, uh, very much like development. Yeah. So we were interested to see whether we could induce mammalian a a uh, stem cells to undergo such a tube formation process and to start expressing sonic hedgehog. Uh -huh. And so we created an uh, we try. We were trying to make three-dimensional um, tube-like structures from mammalian stem cells, and um, yeah, corresponding to the fact that we don't actually see such regeneration, we could not get kind of um, let's say postnatal stem cells to um, make these kind of structures. So my postdoc, who was who was fairly desperate then started to make these structures from embryonic stem cells. So mm. we're not going backwards, we're not, re we're not kind of inducing regeneration, but in the end we succeeded in making three-dimensional um, developing spinal cord structures from embryonic stem cells. And uh -huh. the amazing aspect of that is that you just have, um, you have single cells that start growing and then they make, uh, they make this hollow sphere that's uh, very, um, that's like the developing um, spinal cord. And it'll just form a, um, all the cells will be identical, but if we magically um, sprinkle some retinoic acid on these cultures, um, then somehow the cells um, undergo the self-organization and then form this sonic hedgehog expressing floor plate, but only in one part of the organoid. Uh -huh. So although we've added the, the inducing signals, uh, retinoic acid everywhere, uh, you get a self-organization of a localized signaling center. And so we're at the moment trying to understand how this global retinoic acid application induces self-organization of a localized floor plate. Right, and, and, and your reason for using retinoic acid is that endogenously that's a key signal, is that correct? Well, so, so the original goal was to use retinoic acid to um, posteriorize the cells into the spinal cord because if you, make these kind, if you make these organoids from embryonic stem cells, they tend to think that they're in the brain. Uh -huh. but, and retinoic acid was known to be a, a factor that can cause cells to um, become you know, uh, become spinal cord-like cells. So right. we added retinoic acid at different times. And it does that, but it also did this very unexpected thing of inducing the floor plate to form. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, we, we do think that this is um, reflecting something that occurs uh, during development, but actually at a much earlier stage, um, during the very first uh, times in which the uh, neural tube is forming in the embryo, 
um, in a in a in a structure called the node. We think that there is uh, there is evidence that there's retinoic acid um, there, and that and that this retinoic acid m may be relevant for the induction of um, uh, of floor plate uh, molecules in the embryo. And and so I mean th this is this kind of like retinoic acid sonic hedgehog this kind of axis is this something that you see in many other um, areas of development. Yes, yes. So uh, I find retinoic acid super fascinating because, as you said, in several instances, not only in the limb, um, not only in the, in the neural tube, but I think also in the in teeth, um, somehow retinoic acid induces a localized um, um, formation of a sonic hedgehog expressing domain. And um, we're interested in, you know, what are the features of retinoic acid um, gene regulatory, induced gene regulatory control that gives you this spatial organization of sonic hedgehog expression. Uh huh. So it's not something as simple as retinoic acid um, leading to sonic hedgehog expression. You think that's several, oh, yeah. that's several, there's, st several yes, steps? Yes, yeah, right. yeah. No, there are definitely several steps. So, for example, in, in this uh, uh, neural tube organoid, the spinal cord organoid that we're working with, uh, one thing that retinoic acid does is to induce a transcription factor called FOXA2. Uh -huh. um, but it, that, that itself is not sufficient for inducing this floor plate self-organization. It turns out that uh, retinoic acid is also inducing another uh, transcription factor called PAC6. Uh -huh. and, and these two are expressed in, in you know, salt and pepper patterns. And then this whole, this whole salt and pepper dynamic expression of these fa of transcription factors in the end somehow sorts out and, and cells start competing with each other for expression of FOXA2 and, and then you get this floor plate. It's pretty magical actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, interest, it's interesting you said magical because what I was thinking was, you know, I mean, the other thing that you talk about um, in your abstracts and a lot of people talk about in, in developmental biology is this concept of self-organization. So when you say that these, there's these cells that are competing, you know, I mean, that's a kind of like interesting notion in the in, in that this is how is this how self organization works? Is this a kind of a common feature? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it, it, it probably is. So, so um, through statistical analysis of these of this kind of uh, time when you have several kind of subclusters forming, uh, we we have evidence that these clusters are communicating with each other in, in a sense, you know, competing with each other and trying to suppress the other, so. Right. <laughs> Well, it's, yeah, it's, a, it, it's fascinating, as, as are all um, aspects of uh, developmental biology, and um, we really wish you luck with it, because it feels like that there's, the, there's a lot that, that still needs to be figured out there. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks very much for talking with us today, and um, I look forward to hearing your talk later in the meeting. Oh, my my pleasure. Thanks. Yeah.